15 underrated rebuilds that I don't think you have even thought of doing. In this video today, I'm going to be showing 15 different rebuilds that have different storylines, unique challenges. Uh, some teams are really, really good already. Some teams are not really good. Storylines and the kind of storyline associated with that individual school to help you decide what rebuild you want to do first or coming up. We're going to start with my absolute favorite rebuild on this game, and it is Boise State. Now, Boise State is one that I think is a lot more common, and you're going to see a couple times. But I think it's just such a good opportunity to rebuild what used to be one of the most fan favorites across the country, which I think that Kellen Moore Boise State team could probably have won the national championship if they would have got a shot. But I think the main reason why this team right here is so cool is Malachi Nelson, the number one quarterback in the country, went to USC, was going to be the big successor to Caleb Williams. But then he isn't, right? He transferred out. Lincoln Riley said no. And now he came to Boise State, a non-Power 4 conference, and he's he's a freshman, true freshman, 81 overall quarterback. I think right here, you have a potential Heisman in year three or four level quarterback. You have, in my opinion, the best running back in the country, right? And then outside of that, you don't have the most talented roster, right? So you have a couple pieces, a couple pieces, you have a junior, hopefully you can convince him to stay. Other than that, you don't have the most talent. You have good, okay pieces, but a lot of upperclassmen, right? So the challenge is definitely going to be rebuilding, building around Malachi, giving him an absolute tank of receivers. I think this rebuild has some difficulties. You're not in, in a prestigious conference. You're, you're not going to be championship contenders. You're not really close to any hotbeds of recruiting. So like the proximity to home deal breakers for Texas, the Southeast, you're not really in there. You're really close to home. You're going to hit is probably the Californias, which has some hotbed, but you're going to be competing with the USC's, the UCLA's. You're going to be competing with a lot of top, top schools for those prospects. As we just continue going through the roster, I just think that this right here is a really unique challenge that has a lot of upside. So Boise State, in my opinion, is the best rebuild in the entire game. Next up, we have Appalachian State. Now, this school, in my opinion, is great for the storyline. This used to be the upset team. If you needed a team knocked off, who'd you call? Not the damn Ghostbusters. You called these guys, all right? They ruined so many seasons. The most famous one is the Michigan season, where they absolutely, like, just stole the game from them. This school right now, being back, is so great. They're not in a Power 4 conference. They're not hotbeds for recruits. Um, and so you're going to be in a challenge, but you have one of the most beautiful stadiums in the game, right? So like this team right here, I think is going to be really fun just for aesthetically and immersion playing in the game. I think this is going to be really, really fun. Look at the team. It's not too bad, right? You have a decent underclassman. Hopefully he can develop. You have a good, solid quarterback for year one. I think you have okay pieces throughout the rest of the team. I think your running back room is pretty deep. You have to grab a couple years, right? I think your receiving core, given... There's a lot of young players on here. I think the receiver is going to be one of your definite positions in need if you're going to be taking this program and this project on. I don't think there's any issues with tight ends, really. I don't think there's many, you know, big stars on your O-line besides your guards, I think, really. So your offensive line is really going to be a position in need. Your defensive ends, right, are just kind of mid in this game. I think your D-tackles, you have a couple people who are going to be there for a couple more years. So I think your D-tackles are actually a pretty solid spot. I think you can stay away from that, really focus your recruiting points on the edge exterior power or the uh, exterior pass rushers and specifically your pass catchers i think your linebacking core is a solid one you have a couple underclassmen that are starting you're going to need a couple outside backers i think your corners you're going to need a little bit of work mainly just because you don't have a ton of fast corners right and then we all know in any football game ever any ea game speed kills right and we just don't have the fast fast players so with that being said i don't think there's too much to say i know a lot of you guys have probably already thought about appalachian state just because the memories of them with the upsets in the past but yes appalachian state definitely has made my list of the most underrated rebuilds that you might not have thought about doing next up is going to be memphis now memphis in real life is a really interesting one mainly because they just got the quarterback recruit and i'll put his uh info on screen that just decom that decommitted from Colorado and then recommitted to Memphis. This was the guy that Deion Sanders handpicked to replace Shadur Sanders next season. Now, Memphis now has that commitment, right? So, in real life, really cool. In the game, it's a little bit different because obviously he's not here. However, I think the big thing with this this team right here is year one. I think you're gonna do fine. You're probably gonna win six, seven, eight games. You're gonna make a bowl. And that's about it. The issue is all of your best players, every single one of them, is a senior. Your top four corners in this team, seniors. After that, there's a huge drop-off. Your quarterback one, senior. 
And then we have a huge drop off in talent. Your running back, senior. Your receivers are all seniors. You have a massive, you have to replace so many starters next year that this team this year is okay. Moving forward, they are going to be hurting if you're not recruiting well. This is a really good recruiting challenge school. I mean, we can go back to the corners I was talking about. One, two, three, four. Then we have here. It's a sophomore, not even a freshman. We have a couple decent little freshmen in there, right? I think we have this guy right here, uh, Moss, who I actually think could develop. He has 91 speed, 90 acceleration, or, or 95 acceleration, 90 agility. I think that's actually a really solid prospect to develop. However, you need to redshirt him year one. You can't really play with him year one to ensure that extra year of eligibility. And I think this team, specifically this team, year two is going to be a struggle because obviously you're not a hot hot shot recruiting team you're memphis no offense to any memphis fans but you're memphis right you're in a decent area so you can actually full send a couple of recruits just because you're close to home proximity is almost always going to be a b minus at least because the hotbed is texas georgia florida louisiana all that area you're going to be close enough to home to get that deal breaker at least that minimum grade which is almost always a b minus so i think memphis is a really really solid option i'll continue i'll just go through the roster really quickly just a lot of seniors you're going to see. A lot of seniors. A lot of seniors. We have a junior who's actually a solid piece. Right? Senior. Senior. Junior. Senior. Junior. Sophomore. This is a solid player. Junior. Senior. 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 So, again, year one is going to be solid. I think year two and three is going to be a really big struggle bus because this is just not a recruiting hotbed. Up next, we're going to be talking about Cincinnati. Now, I think this is a very interesting storyline given the fact that they were America's sweetheart team for two years, right? They didn't make the playoff one year, and then the following year they made the playoff, and they got beaten pretty handily by Alabama that year. So I really think that this is a, a rebuild, not necessarily just because it's, it's hard, I don't think it's gonna be the easiest one. I don't think it's gonna be the hardest one, but I think the rebuild for this is a storyline rebuild, right? You have the Kelseys associated with this, so there are some NIL opportunities with with this school particularly. However, the the team is not that good. Like on the first page, we're already at seventy nine, right? If we go look at the most important position, yeah, it's not the highest class, right? We have a couple decent quarterbacks that are gonna be battling it out, right? But it's gonna be tough to build pieces around it. I think this is a really good opportunity for the storyline to take this team. That I think had a real shot at a national championship back to that glory like this team made a playoff like there was only a handful of schools that made a playoff right like they're one of them think about that they are a team that made a four team playoff most of your guys' favorite schools cannot say that and there's another one coming up that also made the playoff but we're gonna finish talking about this I don't I just don't think there's that much talent I think a lot of their their, their receiving core is higher upper class or tight ends are upper class and the O-line is is mid right on the tackle position right the interior offensive line is really good right so we have an interior offensive line we have a pretty good running back right so you're going to be able to run the ball your your opening year right like your, your the first year of, of, of the dynasty right or rebuild i think that's a really solid option defensively i think you're just mid right you have really good deep tackle outside of that mid 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 right mid just mid 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 right you have to completely revamp that defense because your interior defensive lineman is probably going to be leaving first year i think he was a junior right i'm pretty sure he is a junior yeah, yeah. Corey Lone is a junior. However, 91 overall, he's probably declaring for the draft. He'll be a top first, second round pick. So I think Cincinnati has a really, really good opportunity to be a top, top tier rebuild or dynasty for you guys moving forward. Up next, we have one of the only two Pac-12 teams left, which is, if you haven't noticed, why we're picking them already. They are literally in the conference as dead. And if you try to move them out, they say you cannot move Pac-12 teams. So this is why it's going to be so hard. You're not going to be a prestigious conference. You're not going to win any recruits over Oregon. It is going to be very, very, very tough. However, you have a couple NIL deals. I think the uniforms are really, really cool. You're going to struggle with this team, though. You honestly might as well just start your freshman. You're going to struggle. Your quarterback, DJ Ugalele, left, right? He transferred. He's gone. He's out at Florida State now. So you're going to struggle, right? The team is not the best. You have a couple of decent positions where you're actually all right in, right? I, I think some of your offensive line positions are pretty decent. You have a couple of decent defensive players. But for the most part, you are going to struggle really heavily with this squad. I don't see how this team is going to be in the first couple years competing at a high, high level. This team is worse overall than I think like an App State. I think App State just beats these guys straight out in this game because they're just overall more complete. I think this team has a lot of holes. I think you're going to struggle with recruiting. I think you're going to struggle because you don't have a conference and you're not an actual championship contender. You're far away from a lot of people, so that close-to-home proximity is going to suck. 
I think this is a very, very difficult rebuild that I don't think team people are actually going to think that this is actually that difficult. I think this is very, very difficult for a lot of different reasons. I think A, this is one of those programs that is going to get overlooked. And I think B, you're, you keep, you're in the Pac-12. Like there's two teams. You don't have any conference prestige. You don't have conference games. So you have to hope and schedule these games out. And I think this is going to be a struggle bus. And I think if you're willing to take on a cool program and win, I think this is a good program to take over. We are officially into our Power 4 conferences. Now, Stanford. This is a school that used to have really good success in the Harbaugh luck days, right? Now they've kind of fallen off. They're realistically not that good of a program. However, they have a lot of potential. They're in a really good area of the country for recruits. They're in California, right? So I think you actually could do a, a little bit of damage. I don't think this is going to be as hard just because of how many programs or, or recruits there are in the California area. The I think the way that I can make this harder is try to only take recruits that value academic prestige because this is an academic powerhouse in the country, right? This is probably one of the best West Coast schools in America. And I think adding a unique twist, a unique story, a unique challenge and only taking academically inclined recruits would make it really difficult, but also make it extremely realistic. Stanford is at a disadvantage the same way Notre Dame is at a disadvantage where they can't just recruit anybody. They have to recruit intellectually smart people. They have to take, recruit people who can keep up with the rigorous academic schedule that that university has. So going around the team, I'm sorry to be to hit you. I think there are a couple really solid prospects. Like I actually think your receiving core is pretty good for the for the remainder of the the rebuild. I think you have a couple good tight ends. Most of them are senior, but you have a couple good ones, right? I think your offensive line needs some work. Like I, you need to recruit O line. You need to recruit O line. You need to recruit O line. I think you have a couple pass rushers who are like sophomore or something like that, who are actually pretty pretty decent. You have a couple of decent linebackers here and there. Um, but for the most part, you're going to have to replace a lot of these starters. This is a common theme with these, these rebuilds. I also think Stanford is not a team a lot of people are thinking about rebuilding because they're not terrible. They're not great. They're not even good. They're not even bad. They're just, I mean, they're just there. You know what I mean? Like, they're just kind of here. So I think right here is a really solid school, really solid program that you could really enjoy rebuilding uh, with the extra stipulation of academics. Like, your school is very hard. Keep that right keep what makes stanford stanford in game that's the beauty of these of this college game you have so many different programs with so many different stipulations so many different things you can do with it i think the team is okay if you can convince your junior corner to come back i think you're living life right and then i think you have a couple decent underclassmen corners i think your safeties i think are gonna need some help maybe you can move a couple around to try to you know build some depth but outside of that i think the team is okay i think you have a couple really really solid players right like you have a really really top receiver who will probably be somewhere in the 95s by the time you're done in his junior and his senior year. So that is a really, really solid player to build around. It's just going to be hard to beat those recruits from USC, Oregon, and all of those kind of teams. But if you're in for that kind of challenge and you want to make it realistic, I think there's a really top tier school to pick. Going right down the road, we have UCLA. Now the storyline for this school is the same as one that's going to be coming up soon, but this is a basketball school. All the NILs in basketball, all of the, the focus for this area of football is USC. You got the LA Rams. Like you in UCLA are not a football powerhouse. You get football recruit, you have football stuff because you're in LA, right? However, you're you're not that top team, right? Nobody goes, ooh, let's go to UCLA game. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone's going to Rams, everyone's going to Lakers, everyone's going to see the Dodgers, everyone's going to see, you know, USC. There's so many other things. The UCLA football game is just not on the top of the list right going through the roster i don't think it's that bad it's really unfortunate for ucla fans because your five star just transferred so that's really tough i think you have okay players i think your quarterback room is actually pretty set up here you have a couple really solid freshmen you have a good sophomore your senior is going to be here so you can register a couple of the freshmen i'd probably register both of them uh, of, of the top ones and let them develop it out you have good running backs i think you have solid tight ends or you have no tight ends wait no we do have tight ends they're just down here. And you have solid tight ends. I was like, whew. Uh, I think your receiving core is pretty solid, especially if you convince Sturd to come back. I think you can have a really, really solid receiver. And then you have a lot of underclassmen or a couple underclassmen that you're going to need to develop. I think receiver is going to be a position you need to look at. I think tight end, you're definitely not going to need to look at. Like, honestly, I think you're going to be solid for tight end for the first couple of years. And then we get to the, um, well, the less than stellar parts, right? I think, again, 
offensive line is gonna need some help. I think you have a really solid pass rusher here. I would start him right off the rip. I would let him develop as fast as possible. He's an absolute freak, by the way. 6'7", 270, lean pass rusher. He's an international player. He's a freshman. You're going to have a lot of years with him. You're going to have a lot of success. He might break your school record for sacks, right? You have a couple decent freshmen here. Outside of that, the rest of your defensive line is pretty old. You do not have depth at outside linebacker. You have, like I think, four total on the roster. So your outside backer position is really going to need a lot of help. Corners, I think you're all right. You're gonna to need to recruit some. You have a lot of seniors. However, I think you have a couple of decent underclassmen in here. Safety, you have a lot. You have so many safeties. I think you can move some of them around. And then here again, it's seniors. We have a couple of underclassmen. But at the end of the day, this is a really solid storyline to take an underwhelming program for the area that it is and take it and overtake USC, overtake Oregon, and just really dominate that West Coast in recruiting. On top of that, you're now in the Big Ten. Like, you're probably the second best conference in, in, in the country. So this is a really solid opportunity to take a bottom to mid-tier school in a huge conference and really take over. Moving on over to the SEC, we have Vanderbilt. The absolute worst team in the SEC. Second to nobody. These guys are terrible. In real life, they're bad. They don't win games. I don't think I've seen them go positive in, in years, maybe ever. Like, this team is bad. It is not a good program. They don't have good players. So this is a solid team that if you want to just make the challenge, take the worst team in the best conference and go win a natty with them, this is the team to do it. It's literally the worst team in the best conference. Look at this quarterback room. Your junior is 77 rated. Like, you don't, your freshman is, like, come on now. Like, this is a terrible pro program. You have a couple players, I guess, that are okay. You're losing your absolute best player, your safety, right? You're losing him this year. He's not coming back. You don't have a ton of talent around him, right? We go back to the all screen. Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, it goes from 88 to 80s. Like, this team is not good. I, I don't even need to highlight positions. This is just not a good team. Vanderbilt, not good. I can't say that enough. They're not good. Uh, you're recruiting in a very hard place to recruit. You're going to be competing with the other SEC programs. Uh, you don't have conference. Pre you have conference prestige. Um, that's about it, really, right? So I think you're going to take on a big challenge with Vanderbilt. I think it's a fun challenge because again, you're in the SEC, so you do have something going for you. However, that's about it. If you take on Vanderbilt, just know you're going to struggle. All the other SEC, SEC teams are going to beat the crap out of you the first two to three seasons. So take this program on at your own risk. I think this is a very fun and interesting program to take on. And I personally will be doing a Vanderbilt rebuild really, really soon on the channel. Baylor University. I don't know why I said it like that. I'll be completely honest. But Baylor, same thing as Vanderbilt. They're just not very good. They're at a pretty big conference. Honestly, a weaker conference. I think they're the weakest maybe of the big four, right? You're in the big 12. Uh, you don't have Texas, Oklahoma to worry about anymore. However, the problem is you have yourself to worry about. You're terrible. The program, not in a good state. Their coach said it the best, right? Why are you able to actually land recruits? And they just said simply, we have money. So you guys have some NIL opportunities to work with. So that is a really, really solid way to recruit. You're going to be in Texas. So you're going to get a lot of the proximity to home when that's important to a lot of these Texas kids. Okay. You're going to be competing with UT. So that are Texas Longhorns. However, I think you're definitely able to steal a couple here or there, right? I just don't think you have a ton of really solid depth on this team. I think... You have a couple pieces here or there, but you're going to need to recruit. This is a this is a program where, in my opinion, you should not be targeting those five stars constantly. I think you need to target a lot of three and four stars, mainly three stars, and you need to build depth. You need to get a deep program to where you're able to now start pushing for those seven win, eight win, nine win seasons, to, and then get those four to five star prospects, the elite prospects, to want to join your school. So I think Baylor's a long term rebuild. I don't think this is a rebuild that you can do in a couple seasons. I think some of the ones I've shown you so far, you can do in a couple seasons. But I think this right here is one of those programs to where it's a long-term rebuild. Don't expect success soon. This is a three, four, five, six, maybe even seven season rebuild. I think it'd be an interesting one, right? You're, you're in a pretty good area. You're right near Austin, Texas. You're in Waco, Texas, right? So you're near Austin, Dallas. You're going to have a lot of NIL opportunities. Your proximity to home is going to be really, really solid for some of those hotbeds. And your pipeline same as Texas, right? Like you're good. You're going to get some recruits, but you need to be patient with the level of recruits you are getting. Um, that's really about it with Baylor. A hard rebuild. 
long-term rebuild in my opinion but a very very rewarding and fun one nonetheless now we're gonna move on to one i definitely know you have not thought of and if you haven't thought of this one leave a like and hit that sub button for me it is iowa the reason why iowa i think is a really solid rebuild option is they have talent they have talent but it's either guard tight end or defense right like they do not have a ton of offensive weaponry right i mean kate mcnamara do you guys remember when he was good remember when he was out at, out at michigan and he was considered like him and mccarthy took over but i think you have you have some players here that are solid but they're all on the wrong side of the ball we all know right now offense is how you win championships by the way bo stevens went to my hometown blue springs missouri fucking w w guy he's winning the heisman but but see on the series no i mean look you have really good interior offensive linemen and then when we come onto the defensive side i think defensively you're going to have a really 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 fun time your first year uh i don't think you have a ton of depth defensively but you definitely have really solid defensive players and then the big thing with this is coach prestige if you choose not to create your own coach and you run the default coach he has been there for so long so long i think it's like 20 plus years i'm pretty sure he's the longest tenure coach in college football so your coach prestige and you know coach security i feel like that is gonna be very very high so he is a great coach to have if you're not interested in replacing him and you want to keep the same coach i highly 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 recommend that simply because the coach could offer the benefits right you're going to be in a big conference you just don't know how to play offense. It's as simple as that. This team does not know how to play offense. You're going to struggle to recruit offensive players, as Iowa does in real life. Besides tight end, I mean, they are TEU. I mean, literally in their top, you know, screen right here, you have two tight ends, right? So I think it's a solid program. You're going to have a couple NIL opportunities. It's a pretty big, pretty big program in a big conference. I mean, it's Iowa University. They're a very well-known program. However, not well-known for fun, flashy football. Uh, you don't even have to do fun flashy football but you need to do winning championship football which would be interesting to do go win a championship with iowa university i think it'd be really rewarding and i think it'd be pretty interesting so next up we have kansas now as a missouri fan this really pains me to say this but kansas is a great rebuild all right they have a lot of talent a lot of top end talent don't get me wrong this team is very top heavy but they have a lot of talent they have a couple and i opportunities not a lot but this is a this is a basketball powerhouse school but their their jerseys their uniforms i think are really cool and that pains me to say that as a missouri fan but i think they're really really cool i actually quite like kansas's uniforms but when it comes to actual players you have solid players year one but then like again the drop off happens senior quarterback senior running back top tier players decent receivers look all seniors tight end senior tackle guard center not guard not tackle three of your five you need to replace you have a couple left you have a couple pass rushers all seniors again building theme but the issue is this isn't a powerhouse recruiting school you don't have a lot of proximity to home with some of these top tier prospects you're going to be competing with sec missouri you're going to be competing with kansas state in your own state these are this is a program that has a lot of things going for it but a lot of things going against it in terms of recruiting you're not a powerhouse you're not a national championship contender you're not none of these things you're not the most prestigious conference you're, you're none of these things so it is going to be tough and then on top of that in real life you're getting overshadowed overshadowed by your basketball program if you go to the ad as a football guy and you're like hey you know i want some more money take it from basketball the ad is gonna kick you out the damn office you ain't getting no money from those self you ain't getting no money from that team rock chalk jayhawk from them motherfuckers the entire time that allen field office is going to rock buddy who cares about your program you know what i mean you have to make them care about your program kobe bryant is a dog by the way uh, a dog by the way i think he's gonna be great at the next level um but i think right here is where your challenge is you have so many good players but they're all seniors every single one of them is a senior so I think this is where really where the challenge with this program specifically is, is you're not really in a recruiting hotbed. You're not a great recruiting school. You're a basketball school. Good uniforms, though. So I think that is the challenge with Kansas University. All right, so we are going to do Missouri. Now, I know I can hear the comments already saying that this isn't a rebuild or a championship contending team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not really. Realistically, in real life, Missouri's not winning the chip. Okay. I also don't necessarily think in game they're going to win the chip. I, I think they're going to be a good team, but I don't think they're going to win much. I think you have really so solid players off rip, senior quarterback. Outside of that, you don't have that much. Like Glover's a solid, he's a three star. 
I think he might have been upgraded to a four, but I'm pretty sure he was a three star. Matt Zollers is a five star. He just committed. So really, Glover, I'm very, very sorry. You're probably going to be a perennial backup. You're probably going to transfer. Sam Horn, solid, probably going to transfer. You have Matt Noel and our Nate Mo Noel and Marcus Carroll. Mm, seniors, problem. Okay. I think this, I think Missouri is really good for a year, mainly because there's no way that you're getting this man to return. If Luther Burden returned for his senior year, this isn't worth it. This isn't worth mentioning. But there's like no chance you're catching him. And I also don't think if, if I'm doing a Missouri dynasty, I don't think I should try to convince him to stay because in real life, he's going to go be a top five pick. I think the Elise, great player, should have more speed than 92. Mookie Cooper, good player. Should be, he's going to be going. Now, this is where it's okay because we have a couple of decent underclassmen coming in. However, our tight end's solid. Our offensive line is kind of, it's it's okay. It's okay. It's not the best. Not, not great. Right? I think, who, where, who, who, where is it? Oh, they don't have Caden. Yeah, Caden Green. Okay, so they don't have him as a tackle, which is a little crazy. But uh, I think Johnny Walker, senior. Right? Blaylock, junior. And he's not even that great anyway. A senior. Right? Our linebacking core, piss. Just piss in this game. Okay? Our corners are okay. We have Torian Pride, junior. He's a solid man corner. Norwood, solid corner. Greco is a really good prospect, but he's not that ba he's not that great right now. Okay, safeties, okay. Our best safety is Carnell by a lot. He's only 82 rated. I think this team is good, but I think in order to turn, in my opinion, and I'm a, the biggest Missouri fan you'll find, but we're mid zoo, like we're mid, like we're, we've always been mid. When we've been great, we've been the mid team of the great teams. When we're bad, we're just mid. Like we go five and seven, six and six. When we're good, like. We went 10 and 3 last year and or 11 and 2 and nobody gives a fuck like we're, we're mid like we are we're mid nobody thinks of us as a legit threat i think missouri is a really good opportunity for a two three year rebuild where you turn them into the team center of the country you have good proximity to home you have decent nil opportunities however your championship caliber or your your championship thing is like a meme like we're not that good I don't know why people think that this is the easiest rebuild out there. Yeah, you're solid year one, but then you're kind of screwed. Now we have one of my favorite rebuilds in this game, and it is Maryland. So I've done a couple seasons of just testing out things, a couple uh, Road to Glory seasons, and for some reason, Maryland always does really well with this roster. They always start Sam 4, 5, and 0. They break into the top 20, and then they normally lose a couple games here and there. This team has A, cool uniforms, B, a lot of NIL money, C, they're in a great part of the country for recruiting, and just, you know, campus lifestyle and everything like that. Like, they're in the tri-state area. The issue is the players. They're not the best. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest. They're not the best. You have a couple solid players. Don't get me wrong with you. Running back, Kenby's going to be really solid. I think you have a couple decent receivers. They're all going to leave, but you have a couple decent receivers for year one. Your, your tight ends are okay. I think you're okay. I think you're a cool school, uniform-wise. I think you have a couple good alma mater and a really good conference, and you're not really good. That's the problem. I think this is a very similar situation to some of the other schools like Baylor, right? Like, maybe not as bad as Vanderbilt, but like that, to where you're kind of mid. I think you have some solid young players. Don't get me wrong, really solid young players, but you need time to develop them because they're not that good right now. So I think this is a really solid opportunity cool uniforms cool colors cool history with the school you've had a lot of good alma mater come through and i think it's a really solid opportunity for somebody who wants my that medium difficulty rebuild that i think maryland really is north carolina now i think this is sneakily one of the best one of the best dynasty teams in the game you have the beautiful powder blues right you have all of the nil opportunities because of jordan and everything like that but it's a basketball school you have real talent. Like, you have real talent here. Like, maybe not debt. I mean, you have a sophomore 80 overall. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have talent. You have talent on this roster. The issue is, though, you're not a prominent program. Like, you're you're kind of like Mizzou. You're mid. You know what I mean? This is a little better, but really, like, you're just mid. Like, you're the same thing. Like, you haven't won much. You get to a couple championship games. You get to a couple games here. You can win one every once in a while. But outside of that, what you doing? You're doing nothing. You know what I mean? So I think this is a really good opportunity to turn the basketball powerhouse that is North Carolina and turn them into a football powerhouse. Again, uniforms, gorgeous. And I have opportunities all the time, right? Because of the Jordan brand. I think the team is, oh, it's okay. We talked about it a little bit. 
a lot of your best players are seniors, which is a, a theme with our video today. But you're going to need to build some depth. You're going to need to recruit well. You have a couple solid players in some key positions. Like I said, you should have that quarterback's really solid option. But I think the big thing is being able to turn this into a recruiting powerhouse. You're North Carolina. Like, you have all of the opportunity. You have the money, NIL. You're really close to hotbeds. I think this is a really solid opportunity to turn a basketball powerhouse into just an overall college athletic NCAA powerhouse program. Now, the final team, and this is honestly one that I'm really excited to do on the channel. It's going to be one of the first rebuilds that I do, not just Dynasty or my players. One of the first rebuilds I do is going to be Syracuse. I think Syracuse, again, is a traditionally basketball school. But the reason I really care about Syracuse is this guy right here. Disgraced five-star. Had actually a really good year at Ohio State, but was forced to transfer out. Wasn't even allowed to partake in the bowl game. And now he ended up at Syracuse. Kyle McCord could have went to so many schools, but he came to Syracuse. I don't think you're going to win much in the first year, but I think one cool storyline is getting this man drafted. Getting Kyle McCord into the NFL is a really cool storyline. He was a top prospect. Like, it's Kyle McCord. Like, he was a five-star. He was the hottest thing. He was his times David, da uh, David Raiola. Like, that was who he was. I think you have some players. I think Syracuse has a couple players. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of work. A lot of work. But you have a solid tight end. I love throwing to tight ends in any football game. But it's going to be a lot of work, right? This is going to take a long, long time. But I think it's a really cool. Syracuse has never really been good at football. They may have a little crack top 25 here and there, right? Recent success in recent years. They're not, they're not him. They're not it. They're not, they're not nothing, you know what I'm saying? So I think this is a solid program to take over. Again, this is one of my favorites just because of the Kyle McCord storyline. What can you do with him? How do you send him into the NFL? And on top of that, it's just, again, kind of like a mid-team. Good conference. You're in the ACC. So not like a top tier conference, right? I mean, you're power four, but like really, you're, it's really a power two. But if you're in a power four, so you get, you win the ACC, you're guaranteed a bid, right? You got to complete, compete with Clemson's, Miami. And on top of that, it's a fucking basketball school. Again, it's a basketball school. Take over, be the prominent. Take, go to that AD's office, tell him I'm the hot swinging dick in town. You're going to listen to fucking me, pal. And tell him what's good. You're a pretty good player area for like recruiting hotbeds. Like you have a ton of corners, like a ton of corners. You have so much depth here. You're gonna be able to move people to safeties for depth. You can move a couple of your bigger safeties. You know this guy because he's seen you, but he he looks like a really solid linebacker, like a, like a off ball backer, kind of like an Isaiah Simmons kind of build, maybe a little too small, but something on that line. You can cut some kickers. Ain't nobody giving no goddamn fuck about a kicker. But you can move them out and then boom. This is just a really really solid team to take over. You have good players. Really top heavy, really senior heavy. However, again, how can you handle the Kyle McCord transfer? This is probably the best prospect. If he would have committed to Syracuse up for it, it would have been the best prospect in Syracuse history. I hope I'm not uh, wrong at that. But yeah, that is the top 15 rebuilds that I don't think you thought about doing. Give them a shot. Let me know how, how well. Let me know how you're liking the game. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what rebuilds or dynasties I should be doing next. Leave them down in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.